So that's the sequencing I'm talking about. Okay? Now you don't have to do it that way. It's your approach. I'm just giving you two differences between the two approaches. If you do sequence wise, you will not be able to do paper 3. World does not paper 2. World does not come to an end if you don't do it. But it will then also. But another way is what I'm suggesting that way. Perhaps holistically you can get all the three assessments hit upon. And the IA part hits upon part B of the essay time. Remember, by the end of the first semester, the child should be happily being able to write, as per the IB guidelines, a essay type question. Right? Be able to that, then give it some full focus. Right, so I think that's what we were talking about. Right now, because you are giving time for quantitative also, you need resources for quantitative. I'm sure, you understand that. Very limited resources are there. We talk about it. Yeah, online, otherwise, online, 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 and perhaps you may be dealing with this kind of thing. Right? Right. So, if you see the DP curriculum itself, it is synoptic rather than modular. They are not modules, though they may be four modules you are dealing, but they are not module. In most cases, the students understanding the examine at the end of the course, looking at the whole course and not just the aspects. See, once you get that piece in, that you are looking at as a whole course, then your answer looks very different. You are making connection between different aspects of your curriculum. Uh, well, then that gives you a good answer. Because your evaluation and synthesis part will be more balanced. Right? So, here it is a skill development uh, application needs to be integrated into the course design with the syllabus coverage. So you are covering your syllabus, but also what I talked about, skill development from knowledge, understanding, moving up, right? And skills to be constantly reinforced in the learning spiral, which is happening because as you suggested in your interaction with me that uh, we will be doing, when we are in microeconomics, we are touching upon some development at the beginning itself and then running down. So what I am saying is, from Time immemorial, the heart of economics course was indeed development. Over the years, development has become the underbelly of the subject. This is the underbelly. It's an underbelly of international economics. Agree? That's a macro objective point, external equilibrium. Got it? Everything we do is about development and welfare. Macro. Development and welfare. Got it? And your microeconomics ends with the idea of market failure, which is about development and welfare. So the amount of syllabus to cover is cover is substantial, which is therefore particularly important to develop and reinforce excellent study skills and habit early in the course. This is where I'm coming from. That's the scaffolding I'm talking about. How do you develop those skills and excellent study skills? You have to, you know, you know how the children are. With submissions, I don't know, but it's like, with some of the kids, submission is like extracting a tool. You going to have that problem. It's, it's pretty much a problem. That, and especially if it's a day school, you find that boy has disappeared from that. If it is a day school, he perhaps will not come to the school. What is he doing? He's finishing his extended essay or something like that. I don't know. Like these things keep uh, happening. But it's, it's a challenge. Right? Uh, so effective course planning, avoiding overloading the student with coursework and resulting in effective learning from the first day of instruction. So what expectations you give in the first day of instruction is important. Right? So let's quickly talk about now having dealt with the curriculum, looking at it, 
and what we gave in the morning, what ATMs. You understand, there is a need for organizational skills. There is a need for, for time management skills. So your curriculum must be planned like that. So as I said, time given to cover the curriculum and time given to uncover the curriculum. Don't make, I mean, sometimes we literally cover the curriculum. So cover sometimes means you are doing too much, right? And you have to do it. Then how is this? What is the smarter way of doing it? Is what we are discussing, right? Okay. Okay. Right. Now that brings us to the internal. Is that curriculum thing okay? Is that understandable? Do you suggest some scaffolding now? Okay, we keep talking about scaffolding. How do you All right. move from that? I gave you one, one scaffolding, two, two examples of scaffolding from my sense. I gave you two big ones actually. Yeah? Though so they look small. I talked about internal assessment. I said I start with a scratch. Of course, let them read. So the whole story is getting them to <laughs> first. And you know what? They are very good. Children are, I mean, I, I find children all over. Excellent. It's just the way we motivate. So uh, sometimes uh, it's like getting to the child first and then getting to the curriculum. Right? Curriculum will follow. After that, they will follow what you are seeing because they uh, like you. Sometimes, you know, in Kodi it was like this. I said, Kaiser, are you te you're teaching economics next year? Yeah, yeah. I've signed up. Okay. If you're teaching, then I've signed up. If that comes, you know, they didn't know anything about it. So perhaps somewhere down I taught them something which struck as a teacher. Sometimes the teacher did not story also. Right? In our case, you should sign up. You don't have the problem, you make them sign. <laughs> right? Right? So that half the battle is won. So then from here, since he's saying scaffolding, can you discuss what is this thing? I told you one. I said, Leopard and I, I start the scrap. For a development economics part, I want a real world example. Now, what they come from, let's say if they come from the ICSE background or whatever, CBSC or whichever, then when you're giving examples, you say give two examples. So, let's say density of population is high in the Indo Gangetic plane. What are the factors, right? What are the factors affecting density of population? I remember hunting that silly question. All right, so, one is fertility of soil. Am I right? Oh, good. Yeah, I remember it. No, I kind of taught in 19... What was it? I last one. 86 or 87. No, I remember it. See, such good memory. I'm forgetting other things today, but I don't forget that. Right? Fertility of the And you say, like, then you give the... Then you say, like, the soil fertility, where it is, the soil is for that population, density of population is high, and when the skin fertile is... You write a little bit on it. And then you say, for example, come on, Indo Gangetic plain, and you give the other example, Rajasthan. Right? Now, that is not real world example. Are you getting it? A real world example is uh, the IB story would be like you choose one good example. Now, where is that one good example going to come? So I say in develop, pick up one country. I don't tell them that we are doing it for that. That's okay. That the advance is a little later on. First, this is a skill. One thing at a time. The students, most of them don't know beyond one day. Right? You tell them about 10, 15 days, this is how we are doing. Yes, yes, it's there, but they want to know step by step of So, simple thing. In group work, as I said, I gave different countries and I had a white paper to make and a presentation to make and when they finished off and since I gave them so much emphasis I had one month of discussion and helping them getting, not telling them anything telling them this is about getting a good A-star here okay? if you want an A-star this is the criteria which I have fixed for a good thing this is how to do blah 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 source, bibliography while I am doing that activity I am doing research skills I am doing a whole lot of things but you know what I have done? I have got three students who did Nepal and 
another three students who take Bangladesh, another three students who take perhaps any other country in the world, Congo or whatever. Now when they write answers, what's going to happen? Then automatically those stories will come home. Not that he's bugged it. He's not bugged it. But he read about it, he researched about it, and he's able to make those links in his answers a real world example. So a real world example is an example which you can take one and extensively quote it and use it in your, weave it into an answer. That would be a good real world example. A good, you know, a good uh, descriptor for the high, high level. Would be, that would be a good real world example. To what extent does the child translate it is another story. So that's, there's a two scaffolding activities. Now think of some more, can now do two minutes because you see, we keep talking about scaffolding activities, what are those can you start to do? You guys think of what you are doing in your class. Where, you where? The primary is sort of, you was mentioned that. Yeah. They give them all those words up front and then they look at themselves and so that when they get the reading, they don't, uh, Okay, so perhaps you get the terminology right because every subject has a language to it. Am I right? And remember, subject language comes in extended essays, subject language. Yeah. You can't be talking in terms of, uh, you know, uh, uh, like companies put money in a bank. You know what I mean? You're talking about capital, data. you're talking about, you know, there's certain terminologies, terminology which you use. Yes, good. Anything else? So terminology is a good scaffolding. Piece. 